How do, how's everybody doing? Good. That's okay. Go ahead, Philip. I'll have you take your seat. Thanks for coming. That's all right. Go ahead. That's all right. Hi, Trish. Thank you, everybody. Um, I just want to introduce you to our guest today, Lisa Bookoff, who is here. She's a community relations manager for HESCO Elder Services, and she's going to talk to you about their programs and services and eligibility and all of that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you all for coming. And we can enjoy coffee and conversation together, right? <laughs> um, as Debbie said, I'm from HESCO, which is actually right down the road from here. Our headquarters is right on South Street, kind of the other end. Um, right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> My sense of direction is not so great. Uh, yeah, it's right next to Tufts uh, Animal Hospital. Yeah. Um, so uh, HESCO is a nonprofit agency. Um, and we're the uh, Area Agency on Aging and the Aging Service Access Point for South Norfolk County, which includes Walpole, as well as 11 other cities and towns nearby. So HESCO, it's kind of an, ad, uh, an odd acronym, but it stands for Health and Social Services Consortium. And our mission at HESCO is to keep older adults living in their home safely and independently for as long as possible. These are the main programs we have at HESCO. I'm going to touch on each one. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to, to uh, let me know during the, you don't have to wait till the end, please. Whenever, whenever it comes up, you can just raise your hand or just shout out. <laughs> So our home care services are personal and um, as well as like housework. We do not do health services. We're not a nursing agency, uh, but we contract out for housework services and personal services. Um, so we contract with agencies that do that, companies that do that. Um, they, they employ the people and we contract with them. Uh, other things we offer are medication management systems. Those are like those pill dispensers that uh, tell you when to take what and you know shoot them out at the right time or call out. Um, the personal emergency response systems, that's the, you know, back in the day, the I've fallen and I can't get up commercial. That's the necklaces or the bracelets that you can wear uh, for that. And we also have access to adult day health programs. So you want to stay home, but you want to get out and socialize. Uh, we can set you up with that as well. Can I just ask one question? Of course. Um, does HESCO like screen these agencies and people to make sure that you know they're uh, you know they have a good reputation? Yes, great question. Yes, we certainly do. Yeah, we do um, because it's at the end of the day, it's HESCO's reputation as well. So we we make sure that they meet all our requirements um, before we send them to any consumers. Absolutely. So HESCO is, gets state and federal funding. So uh, we have to make sure people are eligible for our program. Mostly we serve adults age 60 and over. Um, and the eligibility is based on how many things you need help with in terms of da your daily life. You know, bathing, cooking, shopping, uh, that sort of thing. If you get screened in as someone who can use those services, uh, you get a case manager or a care manager and a geriatric services support coordinator to, they then have your, your um, case. So they make sure that your schedules are in place, what you're getting, how you're getting it, and they deal with the consumer if there's any issues or changes that need to be made. So the cost, that's always a big, a big concern, of course. Uh, the cost is based on a sliding scale for, in most cases. S depending on how much you make, it's a per percentage of that. Um, now, some people pay a, a small co-payment of, say, $49 a month for their services. If you have a little more money, it will probably be um, just a percentage of what you bring in. Having said that, uh, 
because we contract with these companies, our fees are less than you would find if you went out and got one yourself because we, they have to meet our, our criteria in terms of what we'll pay them, which is less than the average Joe will pay somebody coming in. I must also say, though, um, you've all heard about the issues with finding employees or, or staff, and uh, the home care services are no different. In fact, maybe they might be worse than some. So these agencies, these companies, cannot find enough workers. Um, as a result, we do have a waiting list now of people we've screened who we think are eligible for our services, and they're just waiting for someone who can help them. And it really varies on the wait list depending on where you're located, you know, if there happens to be someone out there who can, who can work for you. Um, or it, we also, if somebody is in real need, um, we move them up on the list. But just fair warning that there is a wait list right now. One of the other services we offer, fortunately but unfortunately that we have to offer it, uh, are protective services for older adults. Um, this can include self-neglect, self just not taking care of yourself. It can also be financial exploitation, uh, certainly physical abuse, mental abuse, emotional abuse. Um, so there is, uh, the next slide will show you an 800 number that you can call if you think somebody is being abused. You call that, it's confidential by the way, nobody will, will know that this was ever done, uh, in your name at least. Um, and if they think it meets the standards, they send it to our protective service team who then goes and investigates it. Um, if, if they find that they think there is an issue, they will do everything they can do to put a plan in place to protect the consumer who is being abused and to uh, bring in any agencies that they feel they may need to bring in for them. So this is the 800 number that I referred to. Um, again, that's a state number. So it comes into that number. They determine where the abuse... So this, this would be good for anybody even outside our area because they know who to forward it to. So even if you knew someone in yeah, Shrewsbury uh, who, who might need some help, this is the number you'd call for that as well. So probably what we're best known for here is our Meals on Wheels program. We serve about 600 to 700 meals a week. Um, and Walpole is one of the towns we serve. Carol, who's in the back there, is our site manager for the nutrition program. Uh, and all our drivers are, are volunteers. We have over 400 Meals on Wheels drivers, uh, all of whom volunteer their time. And what happens with the Meals on Wheels is um, you have to be eligible, first of all. You have to either be homebound, can't prepare meals for yourselves, uh, not have anyone helping you, or there might be a, a, an issue with food insecurity that also qualifies. The drivers usually pick up the meals kind of mid-morning. They deliver a hot meal to the consumer. When they deliver the meal, they don't just drop it off. Part of the deal is they have to go up to the door, knock on the door, and hand the meal to the person. That that helps in two other ways. It's a security check to make sure, God forbid, no one's laying on the floor and no one's discovered them. But also it's a social, it's a social outing because so many of the people who are homebound, they don't have anyone living with them. It might be the only person they see that day. And so they develop frequently, they develop really nice relationships and they talk and they stay a little bit and, and talk to them. Um, in addition to the hot meals, they can deliver frozen meals and cold meals, uh, like a sandwich for dinner. So the main meal for lunch is warm, and then after that we provide other meals um, for other times of the day. And even if need be, we can also provide uh, frozen meals for the weekends uh, when we don't deliver, we only deliver Monday through Friday. So part of our nutrition program, um, includes a dietitian and oh can I I'm sorry let me just jump back I know I forgot something on the meals and wheels 
that is a free service. We do ask for a donation of $3 a meal, but it's totally uh, up to you whether you want to have a donation or not. It's not obligatory. Again, it, it is free. This nutrition program is also free, and this is to anybody. You don't have to be eligible for this. You can just be at the senior center and want to you know, look into eating for the best way you can eat for yourself or to, to treat or to help prevent some sicknesses. We have a dietitian on staff who comes to the Walpole Senior Center and will meet with you either one-on-one -on -one or she can do a presentation like this for more general things. And I'm sure you can check at the front desk to make an appointment with her um, to uh, set up a time where you could meet one-on-one -on -one and discuss your needs. And again, this, there's no cost for this, it's free. Now the SHINE program. I bet you've all heard right now of the open- Too loud. Hi, how's everybody doing? Good, that's okay. Go ahead, Philip. I'll have you take your seat. Thanks for coming. That's all right. Go ahead. That's all right. Hi, Trish. Thank you, everybody. Um, I just want to introduce you to our guest today, Lisa Bookoff, who is here. She's a community relations manager for HESCO Elder Services, and she's going to talk to you about their programs and services and eligibility and all of that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you all for coming. And we can enjoy coffee and conversation together, right? <laughs> um, as Debbie said, I'm from HESCO, which is actually right down the road from here. Our headquarters is right on South Street, kind of the other end. Um, right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> My sense of direction is not so great. Uh, yeah, it's right next to Tufts uh, Animal Hospital. Yeah. Um, so uh, HESCO is a nonprofit agency. Um, and we're the uh, Area Agency on Aging and the Aging Service Access Point for South Norfolk County, which includes Walpole, as well as 11 other cities and towns nearby. So HESCO, it's kind of an, ad, uh, an odd acronym, but it stands for Health and Social Services Consortium. And our mission at HESCO is to keep older adults living in their home safely and independently for as long as possible. These are the main programs we have at HESCO. I'm going to touch on each one. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to, to uh, let me know during the, you don't have to wait till the end, please. Whenever, whenever it comes up, you can just raise your hand or just shout out. <laughs> So our home care services are personal and um, as well as like housework. We do not do health services. We're not a nursing agency, uh, but we contract out for housework services and personal services. Um, so we contract with agencies that do that, companies that do that. Um, they, they employ the people and we contract with them. Uh, other things we offer are medication management systems. Those are like those pill dispensers that uh, tell you when to take what and you know shoot them out at the right time or call out. Um, the personal emergency response systems, that's the, you know, back in the day, the I've fallen and I can't get up commercial. That's the necklaces or the bracelets that you can wear uh, for that. And we also have access to adult day health programs. So you want to stay home, but you want to get out and socialize. Uh, we can set you up with that as well. Can I just ask one question? Of course. Uh, does HESCO like screen these agencies and people to make sure that you know, they're, uh, you know, they have a good reputation? Yes, great question. Yes, we certainly do. Yeah, we do. Um, because it's at the end of the day, it's HESCO's reputation as well. So we, we make sure that they meet all our requirements um, before we send them to any consumers. Absolutely. Yeah. So HESCO is, gets state and federal funding. So uh, we have to make sure people are eligible for our program. Mostly we serve adults age 60 and over. Um, and the eligibility is based on how many things you need help with in terms of da your daily life. You know, bathing, 
cooking, shopping, uh, that sort of thing. If you get screened in as someone who can use those services, uh, you get a case manager or a care manager and a geriatric services support coordinator to, they then have your, your um, case. So they make sure that your schedules are in place, what you're getting, how you're getting it, and they deal with the consumer if there's any issues or changes that need to be made. So the cost, that's always a big, a big concern, of course. Uh, the cost is based on a sliding scale for, in most cases. S depending on how much you make, it's a per percentage of that. Um, now, some people pay a, a small co-payment of, say, $49 a month for their services. If you have a little more money, it will probably be um, just a percentage of what you bring in. Having said that, uh, because we contract with these companies, our fees are less than you would find if you went out and got one yourself. Because we, they have to meet our, our criteria in terms of what we'll pay them, which is less than the average Joe will pay somebody coming in. I must also say though, um, you've all heard about the issues with finding employees or, or staff. And uh, the home care services are no different. In fact, maybe they might be worse than some. So these agencies, these companies, cannot find enough workers. Um, as a result, we do have a waiting list now of people we've screened who we think are eligible for our services, and they're just waiting for someone who can help them. And it really varies on the wait list depending on where you're located, You know, if there happens to be someone out there who can, who can work for you. Um, or it, we also, if somebody is in real need, um, we move them up on the list. But just fair warning that there is a wait list right now. One of the other services we offer, fortunately but unfortunately that we have to offer it, uh, are protective services for older adults. Um, this can include self-neglect, self just not taking care of yourself. It can also be financial exploitation, uh, certainly physical abuse, mental abuse, emotional abuse. Um, so there is, uh, the next slide will show you an 800 number that you can call if you think somebody is being abused. You call that, it's confidential by the way, nobody will, will know that this was ever done, uh, in your name at least. Um, and if they think it meets the standards, they send it to our protective service team who then goes and investigates it. Um, if if they find that they think there is an issue, they will do everything they can do to put a plan in place to protect the consumer who is being abused and to uh, bring in any agencies that they feel they may need to bring in for them. So this is the 800 number that I referred to. Um, again, that's a state number. So it comes into that number, they determine where the abuse, so this, this would be good for anybody even outside our area because they know who to forward it to. So even if you knew someone in you know, Shrewsbury uh, who, who might need some help, this is the number you'd call for that as well. So probably what we're best known for here is our Meals on Wheels program. We serve about 600 to 700 meals a week. Um, and Walpole is one of the towns we serve. Carol, who's in the back there, is our site. They had the calories on hand, for which they Right, lunch. right. Sure. Hmm. Right. I do know that on certain days, the sodium levels are higher. For instance, days we have hot dogs. Mm. But I, I have a feeling if it balances out probably at the end of the month, because we have to meet those requirements. Oh, right, right. I'll tell you an interesting story. So. Um, 
the people f who get Meals on Wheels for the holidays, for Thanksgiving and Christmas, will get a meal before, before the day before, the regular Meals on Wheels meal. But HESCO does something else. We want to provide a nice meal. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't meet those guidelines. It, does, it has more fat. It has more calories. It has more salt. It has more taste. Uh, so it's a special meal that we provide. We do the fundraising for that all on our own because we think it's an important service to offer. So we end up having to raise about $10,000 to provide those meals to, this year, 304 people on Thanksgiving and Christmas, the day before. Um, and those are nicer meals and they goodie bags and that sort of thing. Uh, but that's, you know, sometimes we get people say our food isn't flavorful because they're meeting these guidelines. Um, but yeah, the holiday meals, I think, are a nice, a nice point and something that HESCO just does above and beyond because we think it's important for people to enjoy a holiday meal once in a while. Yeah, and she enjoyed them? Very, very salty. Oh. Right, right. Occasionally you get one that's a little bit salty. Yes. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's tough. Right. I think it's probably the you know, federal guidelines have probably changed quite a bit. And we also offer special meals. We have kosher meals and we have, um, what's the other one? Diabetic meals. Um, and that's done separately. And yeah. I was going to say also that you, you can get, um, you know, I'm very experienced with it because I, I took care of Pesco, did a wonderful job with my mother. Oh. It, it, it's possible to get like uh, low sugar meals and you, right. can, you know, a, a, ask for that. If, if you're worried about nutrition, call up and, and they have different meals. So right. My mother was diabetic and uh, it was a big help. Right. No, I don't, not at all. The other thing we offer is if, uh, if someone's on a soft food diet, we have soft food diets as well. Yes. In terms of eligibility, no. Um, again, you just you go through your local uh, council on aging first, and if they can't meet the need, they'll forward it to HESCO. Um, there's no income, or it, it, you have to be 60 or over. Um, that's the only. Eligibility. I I'm not positive of this, but it's a taxi service, so my guess is they drop you off at the door. But I'm not sure. I, I would say that you, 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 one of the requirements is that you have to be able to walk up to the taxi. Right. Very important. Like they're not going to come into the house and help you uh, get out of it. Although I would say. Oh, good. They help me get into a taxi and they help me go But I know that's a firm requirement. You have to be able to walk inside yourself. And I think, I think in cases where that is an issue, we usually suggest that if they have a friend or a family member they can bring with them to help them. Uh, we do it, you know, ask that they do that. Yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. An application process and a quarry check, which is a state quarry. Uh, quarry is a state check that the police do. Um, if we have a few volunteers who live out of state, then we have to do a national background check. They're, we uh, we're very careful with that. Um, they're going. They're getting the addresses of people who you know might be fragile, and so we we keep that very sacred. We make sure that they're, you know, they pass those checks. To add on to what Jeffrey uh, has said, that you, HESCO may do quarry checks on their employees, but then they do quarry checks on the people that you hire, like the, the housekeepers and the various people that come to you when they help you put home. We do not do those background checks, but my guess, and this is a guess, and I can get back to you with the, the answer, but I feel like the agencies who hire them must have them pass those background checks, and we would only contact with those agencies. Um, but I think that must be a requirement, honestly, because all our employees and all our volunteers must pass those. So I can't imagine that the workers don't as well. All 
I did bring some little handouts um, in the car on the cart next to the the snack table. There's some jar grippers, um, and there's some wipes for your glasses to get the smears off. Uh, I also have some information here, um, and if you have any specific questions, I'll I'll hang around here. Yes. I, no, I don't know. Um, you could call our main number and ask them, though. Um, information and referral could probably give you a better idea of that. Okay, so thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Please see me if you have any questions or concerns. Mm -hmm.